according to your Vice interview, you know, you were very outspoken that there definitely needs to be prison reform. Right. A- and uh, the steps that are, and you were actually vocal about how blacks were in the system sort of targeted judicially unfairly. So here's here's the problem in in this. Not not only not only am I an advocate uh-huh. uh, under President Trump, um, he signed the First Step Act. Uh, I was pretty instrumental in getting um, getting that passed. Uh, I was actually in the Oval Office with him when he signed the bill, and that was to basically create incentives, uh, good time incentives for inmates in federal prison. So they they would get out sooner um, without keeping them locked away forever um, and, and a bunch of other things. But to, to go to your question, here's my problem with the system. You take areas like, um, let's take Baltimore, for example. Mm-hmm. The DEA goes in and they do these stings, right, where they're going to lock up really bad guys. Guys are engaged in violence. Guys are bad guys. I have no problem with going after the bad guys, the really bad guys, if they're authentically, you know, the villains, right? But when you have young kids today, 18, 19, 17 years old, they go out there buying dime bags of cocaine, right? Mm -hmm. And they get caught up in these conspiracies with these other bad guys. Well, guess what? They get charged with the same amount of weight that the bad guy did. If the guy's doing two kilos a week, and you went out and bought three dime bags in a week, and they mm-hmm. saw you, and they witnessed it, and they collared you for those three buys, you get you get charged with the two kilos. How's that even possible? Well, that's like the what's law. The, what's the logic in that? Like if there, is, if you're there going, is no logic. Okay, there is that's, no logic, right. and that's my argument. So what you do is you then take that that young kid mm-hmm. who had no prior record, you lock him up, and you basically say, look, you're looking at life. Because that two kilos, that gets you life. You're looking at life. Take a plea for 10 years. And your defense, your, your defense lawyer, most of them are you know, provided by the courts. He says, you got to take the deal. Take the deal. You'll be fine. 10 years. You're, you're not doing life 10 years. You're 18. You'll be out you're when you're 28. You'll be, 18, you'll be out when you're 26. Just take the deal. Okay, great. You, you sign a plea for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Okay? You do eight. Okay? You had no criminal record. You had no criminal background. You're not a bad kid. But guess what we did? We took you and we put you into a system that's full of monsters, right? What is prison? Prison is a training ground for thuggery, criminality. You learn how to steal, cheat, lie, manipulate. It's like business school for thugs. It's it's a business school for thugs and violence, Mm -hmm. right? You need to survive. You need to learn how to fight. You get into a verbal altercation, and you know the end of that is usually somebody getting knifed, pummeled, cut. Um, that's the bottom line. That's what we did. We took mm-hmm. that that 18-year-old kid yeah. who had no violence, no problems. We put him into the system, and then at 26, we sent him home. Mm-hmm. And legislators in Washington have sat around in circle jerks for the past 30 years. They can't figure out why the recidivism rate isn't dropping. What's this word, recidivism? Revisiting, going Revisiting. back okay. to jail. Okay, yeah, right? gotcha. So the recidivism rate isn't dropping because these guys have no choice but to revert to crime. They come out after 26 right. years, and I, and I had kids in prison that I was teaching classes to, and I would say, you know, you got to get your GED. You got to you gotta try to get some college when you get out. Mm-hmm. And they would look at me and they'd say, Kamish, I'm black. I'm a convicted felon. I'm not going to be able to get a job. That GED is not going to help me. And here's the sad thing. For the most part, they're right. They're right. They're yeah. right. Well, the question for you, because when you have a felony on your record, you're fucked. No, is that- you're, you're fucked. Yeah. And and they know it. Right. And they know so it. So it's like, all right, what's the point of getting the GED, the high school degree? Because once I'm a felon, that's going to follow me for life. Any any 80, job they 80%. ask you, have you ever been convicted of a felony? Yes. Fuck that candidate. I mean, is that right. basically what that's, happens? That's exactly what happens. It's very and sad. And nobody, nobody gets it. Nobody, 
you know, everybody talks a good game in the, in the legislators, you know, oh, we're, you know, we want to do this, we want to do this. You know what, you know, it, getting that First Step Act signed by President Trump, mm-hmm. it was a major headache. If it wasn't for Jared Kushner and, and a whole cadre of people around him that fought like hell with these legislators, that thing would have never got signed. Never. Mm-hmm. And it's still not enough. It's far from enough. But Obama was doing stuff too. And oh, I know you're not I a was, fan of Obama, but I know no, you've but done, I work. I was right. in, I worked with the Obama administration okay. trying to get it done. Mm-hmm. Trying to get it done. I I spent I was in the White House physically four or five times during the Obama administration. Wow. Trying to get it done, trying to get these guys to work together. And you know, listen, I am I am uh <laughs> these days I think everybody, in you know, for the exception of maybe five people, out of all of Congress, you know, the senators, the congressmen, they're all full of shit. You know, they they tell you one thing privately. They, t- you know, oh, it's the right thing to do. You're right. You're a hundred percent right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. And they walk out the door. They stand up at a press conference, and they say, "Well, we're not sure. We don't know." We we'll have to look at it. We, you know, there are issues. Play politics. They have to kind of defend their position, their political party. They have to. They have not only defend their position, yeah. but they're basically, you know, some guy didn't sign off on a bill that this guy yeah. wants. Well, it's it's revenge time. So now I'm gonna not. I'm not gonna sign his shit because he didn't sign mine. So if you enjoyed this little short segment from the podcast that we did, here's another short segment to watch. Or if you want to see the entire podcast, click over here. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.